Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we have another world exclusive. Meet Koi Dogs. Coyotes are famous for running amok in the USA, especially since the top predator, the wolf, was culled so heavily that coyotes' numbers have quadrupled or even more. Cute and fuzzy like a small wolf mixed with a fox, adorable wild fur and a naughty cheeky assertive character that you will either love or hate. So what happens if you breed a coyote with a dog? Will you get a crazy no, wild no, no, coyote? No. Or might you get something cute that you can keep as a pet with a nice temperament? Today, Animal Watch brings you a YouTube exclusive as we fly out to California to meet the only breeder of authentic looking koi dogs in the world. Will they be feisty and tricky or nice and cuddly? Today, I'm going to tell you everything about owning a koi dog as a pet, so don't go away. Now, Animal Watch loves all types of canids, especially the wild and persecuted ones. We love canines that represent a natural, healthy anatomy, long muzzle, good erect ears, healthy teeth, natural fur, everything that nature equipped these creatures with before human intervention came about. Hmm. The coyote embodies everything we admire from his beautiful healthy physique to his cheeky naughty demeanour. He's an opportunist like foxes are and has done well in urban areas where wolves would have not, as he moves alone, mostly under the cover of dark, rifling through bins and adapting to human expansion. So what if I was to tell you that you could have a pet coyote? Well, not entirely a full one, but one that was made up of dog DNA and coyote DNA. What would you think? Would you think that that's a mad idea? I mean, we have wolf dogs, right? Low content, right up to almost full blood wolves, and they can exist as pets. So what's the difference? I mean, he's smaller, cuter, he must be easier to care for, right? Well, after drooling over Mark Klemperer's koi dog photos for a few years now, and definitely thinking about adding a koi dog to my family, I took the bold step of booking a flight to Palm Springs in order to meet these little cuties in person. Known as miniature North Aid dogs, these koi dogs look sensational, authentic looking, adorable, cuddly, foxy. I was so excited to meet them and boy, I was not disappointed. Hello, hey, how are you doing? You? Hey, welcome to California. I'm Mark Klepper. Oh, and this is Lawan, my little girl. Look. Oh my Look. goodness. Oh, she, <laughs> she's after the microphone. Oh no, it's a little fuzzy <laughs> mouse. So we got like the miniature North American Indian dogs. And of course you've got the sister project, haven't you? The, yes. For the big guys with yes, the wolf the, in them. The big guys have been going for decades and this is a newer project, a sister project. The wild content is strictly coyote ancestry. Coyote, so. As you can see, she looks like a little one. I love her so much. And you're going to take me around today and we're going to learn oh, yeah. everything about this brand new breed. It's an yes. exclusive on Animal Watch. Never before has um, the internet ever seen koi dogs quite like this. We have people that have koi dogs here, there and everywhere. And they say they're koi dogs, but they don't really look like coyotes at all. Whereas these ones actually genuinely look like coyotes. So yes. I'm really excited to be the channel to feature these little babies. Let's go. Let's, Let's find out everything adventure. about these little koi dogs. After the unbelievably cute reception, I was sold. I mean, <laughs> that dog was totally up my street. Cute, foxy, lovable, small size, natural looking. But realistically, all of these traits get dogs bought on a whim. 
by awful owners who do not think through the complications of caring for a primitive breed. And there are negatives as well as positives. So the only person who could tell me everything about having one of these sausages was Mark himself. So he sat down in the beautiful Palm Springs sunset to have a chat. So I'm here today with Mark Klemperer, the creator of these amazing little minis that we've got here. And what are their official names and what exactly are they? This little creature is an adult miniature North American Indian dog. She's a female named Itka. And what this is, is a sister project to the, my main work, which is the big North American Indian dogs, the wolf-like ones that are huge. But it's a completely different project with similar goals. So we want wild looks and a very sweet temperament. And it's been accomplished by combining uh, coyote blood, much smaller animal than a wolf, and small spitz type dogs with bouncy, happy temperaments. Yeah. And so far, so good. We've got kind of a wild look. Let's go through the history of the creation of yes. this dog. Some people don't realize because not all coyotes are the same, but in the Western US, there are these tiny little coyotes running around. They are usually like 18 to 25, maybe top 30 pounds, slender, long legs, and they specialize in eating very small game, like rodents, lizards, even insects. And uh, there's not really been any, maybe a tiny bit of dog has been mixed in, you know, through natural breeding, but we don't have any wolf mixed in. You go farther east, you get eastern coyotes that have a significant amount of dog and wolf in them, and they're wow. bigger. They're up to like 55 pounds, almost as big as a wolf. Yeah. And this is not what we wanted. We wanted something tiny. And so what we've got here is a combination of high content uh, western coyote genetics and American Eskimo which is a spitz, a and white these, spitz. And these are mid-content? These are mid-content, yes, yes. Let's just talk about what they look like. Okay, okay. so we've got a wild coat here. It's yeah. the same as in a coyote, a yes. coat. So she's got the coloration that goes to the roots. Yes. She's got the stiff guard hairs. Relatively long legs, slender athletic body. But not quite as long as the no. coyote. Not as extreme. The muzzle isn't quite as sharp or as long. The Western <laughs> desert coyote has huge ears, yeah. so almost like a jackrabbit, <laughs> not literally, but yeah. like radiators to cool the whole body. So how heavy is she? This little thing, she weighs about 18 pounds. I'm totally intolerant of non-wild color mutations in the North American Indian dog project, the big ones. Yeah. But with these, we're seeing all across the US, all kinds of crazy color mutations that are showing up from dog genetics that got mixed in. Yeah. But you can't see any other side of the dog except born white, Born black, like a miniature little black wolf. Somebody domesticates a wild coyote. Okay. Will they be like this or is she significantly different? There are significant differences. I've talked to many, many people who do coyote rescue, people find coyote pups, a mother's been killed by a car, whatever. You take one, let's say even at four days of age, bottle feed it, it's gonna be bouncing around, playing with you. When they reach puberty, they start snarling and arching their back and gaping. They will attack people, except for one person they pick if there's bonded to people, or one canine. People think they live in packs like wolves, but they don't. They live in pairs, and a pair controls a huge territory. And then they look like a pack when they have their juvenile offspring running around for about a year. They send them off, and if any other coyote comes into that territory, it better run for its life or there's gonna be a fight. A lot of that yodeling that you hear echoing through the hills around here, it's the pair telling everyone else to stay away. Now these little characters, she's intact. She's five years old. She's actually had puppies, and she just loves human touch. Any person that's around who smiles at her, looks at her, um, calls her, she's ready to cuddle. Yeah. Now it seems to me that there were varying characters of koi dogs, just like dogs. Itka was very calm and easy in public, but more stoic and confident in character. Whereas Lowen was an absolute goofball and loved meeting everybody on a walk around. I mean, just look at her meeting passers-by in downtown Palm Springs. Then there was Luke, less socialized. He was a great example of why socialization is so important in keeping one of these. He was learning to get over his fears, but as he is a stay-at-home pet, he doesn't really need to go out too much. You were talking about socializing from a very, very young age. You must bottle feed them. Yes, three weeks. Completely away from the mum. Completely away. You have to take over completely. Then all the cuddling, tickling, tickling the tummy, talking to them, treating them like little baby people. And 
They just need a slurry of a formula through a bottle for a few days, then they start eating out of a bowl. During that critical period, they have to be taken everywhere, handled by lots of people, and then they, they learn the world is full of potential friends. Yeah. If you want to pet one in a public area, you must get them out young to get over the fear that the wolf dogs also equally possess. All of this is common sense when socializing any dog breed. You just have to remember that dogs that carry recent wild animal DNA fear humans naturally. So like wolf dogs, you must address this far more intensively than any domestic dog breed. Same-sex aggression is a huge issue. If it's an intact animal that was not altered before puberty, mm -hmm. okay, there is no keeping two adult females together. This girl and her sweet sister, Lawan, that you know well, Yes. they were born in the same litter, raised in the same place, and they cannot be near each other. Yeah. They will try to hurt each and other. And we, we filmed a little bit of that, yeah, just so you, yeah, so you guys can see it's what real. we're talking about. <laughs> no, 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 no. What Mark's trying to say is, um, if you're interested in one like this and you'd like it to blend into your household, I'm not quite sure what dogs you would have or whether you have cats or whatever, you must have it spayed or neutered. They are very early maturing. Okay. So we're talking five months we need to have them spayed. Five spay months, they've yes. got to be spayed or neutered. By six then. months, they can reach puberty. Now, Mark made it clear that coyotes stay in pairs in the wild to breed, unlike pack living wolves, and don't like other same sex coyotes due to sexual competition. So it cannot be stressed enough that this is what makes a good or bad pet koi dog. You must turn off that desire to breed, otherwise you can't mix these dogs with other dogs. A great example is this neutered boy bred by Mark Klemperer. He was neutered before sexual maturity and now lives happily alongside another male dog. He also plays with strange dogs when they go out, so it is possible. It all comes down to a few rules that you must do if you want it to work for you. The other thing is these can't go off lead, right? Well, what do you think? Here's the thing. I don't do it, but um, I know of two people. I won't mention their names because that's their business because yeah. they sometimes face some uh, pushback. They both have first generation coyote crosses, 50%, and they both do tons of off lead work but they put a lot of work into it. They do this in very safe places. So it's definitely possible. Southern California is filled with people and dogs and I just don't feel comfortable with off-lead stuff. But we need to talk about the voice. Oh yeah, so you were saying these are noisy little things. Wolves have got this ooh sound and coyotes are like ah! Yeah. Ah! Yodel, like yeah, <laughs> shrieking. We took a sound bite earlier because Mark was saying you've never heard anything like it. The volume has to be twice yeah. a dog, don't you think? We're just going to play a sound bite and I want you to just listen to what this girl <laughs> sounds like. And I want you to imagine you've gone to the shops. Yeah. And this is what your neighbors are hearing. Yes. So don't have one of these if your neighbors don't like noise because yeah. this, this is what they're going to do when you're out. Just listen to this, listen. <laughs> And do they guard? The way we socialize them, the people won't trigger it, but other dogs or coyotes will. Okay, so, so it's just strange dogs based. coming around, that could start the shrieking, yes. Okay. And they're trying to shriek yeah. and sound five times larger than they really are. Another serious subject is yes. how it's so important to keep these guys safe. If one of these little characters was out and ran up to strangers, that would be perceived as something like a rabid coyote who has suddenly no fear of people and she could be instantly killed. So, there has to be a secure outdoor containment area. If you don't have that, you shouldn't have one. The Koi Dogs had fun in Western Recreation Pioneer Town and fitted in totally to that coyote vibe. This is a little girl, this is a little boy. Little boy, and they're both different colors, aren't yes, they? Yes, they're siblings from the same parents. 
This little character, the boy, looks just identical to a little pure koi at this age, except there's a little curve to the tail. But his yeah. coloring, everything, sharp little muzzle, the so this length. is what they'd look like in the wild if yes. you saw little coyote yes. babies. That's sort of quite a light fawny color yes. almost. Yes, very classic. And the coat length and everything, just basically like a Western coyote. This is the little girl, and we've got a couple different mutations at work here. So again, same parents, but we've got the recessive long-haired coat that came from the dog side of the family. So American Eskimos have a standoff coat. And she's got that. She is going to mature into a fuzzier creature that looks a lot like Matilda. Yeah, which we met yes. the other day. That fuzzier so, yeah. look, and I love that look because it, it's sort of like a Montana Northern Coyote winter coat all year round. Yeah, because um, coyotes can look very different depending yes. on where, which part of um, America they're in. Yeah, and they? the time so, of year too. Yeah. yeah. Now this coloring is very similar to a lot of wolf dog pups, high contents. She's going to lighten up a lot. She's going to be a really cool wild type gray, but it's a little bit charcoaly at this age and it'll get lighter and it'll be kind of a, a gray with less rufous tones than he's going to have. So you've had so them away I've, from the parents for yes. what, two weeks now, one week? Yeah, about a week and a half. They're yeah. four and a half weeks old. I took them at three weeks, which is late for a wolf dog, but dead on for these guys. They've been handled by a lot of people. You call them and they just run to you. They eat out of a bowl now very round little tummies so <laughs> i didn't even have to bottle feed more than about five days and now they're on a mush and they just eat three times a day and things are going well in conclusion these dogs were absolutely gorgeous and affectionate and cute and gorgeous and affectionate yes i fell in love with them can't you tell they look like a fox and also a bit like my deceased tamascan kayoshi they can be pets, but with strict, strict criteria. To anyone wanting one, that is, if you are to keep these pets safe. Everywhere we walked, people stopped us, shocked, asking if they were coyotes. Which brings me to the most serious point. Coyotes are shot in the thousands in USA. You cannot let these dogs escape, as there is hardly any visible difference between them and a wild coyote. As Mark explained, they will also be tame, so could be mistaken as a rabid coyote, and they will be shot. So you must have a very well-fenced yard with zero chance of escape. They can and will climb fencing, so I'm going to suggest the same level as fencing as a wolf dog. If you've seen foxes and coyotes climbing over tall walls, then you'll know why this is so important. You must get them fixed before sexual maturity and Mark is not going to let you have a koi dog without this in place. So don't even bother snaking out of it. These guys turn into the Tasmanian devil when confronted with a competitor. So let's keep them all friendly and lovable with our other dogs. It's probably unlikely that they will be great with small pets. So I wouldn't even try it. Maybe if raised with a large cat, the large cat being there first, it could possibly work, but I wouldn't leave them together alone. I think rabbits are off the cards here and definitely on the menu. You must socialize these cuties from day one, carry them out whilst they are babies, get other people to hold and pet them, get them down busy high streets, in your car and anywhere that there's a positive experience that can manifest itself. Be aware that they can become attached to one person or dog. So make sure they meet lots of people and nice, good, charactered, strange dogs. So they don't attach onto you and only you. On the positive, they are small and light. They can be carried easily and not too tricky if they pull on the leash. They are cuddly and affectionate, so your heart will explode with love for these creatures but it's our job to keep them safe. So any neglect to our advice will affect their welfare. And this would be the saddest thing ever. Animal Watch is here to educate, not promote. We tell you the truth, give you the ammunition and knowledge, and then leave it up to you to do the right thing. Remember, I'm the wolf girl, and I still don't have a high content wolf dog. As I know where I live, it's not suitable for one at this current time in my life. I hope you do the same thing as me and always put the dog's needs before your temptation. 
Anyway, if you are the right person and do follow these rules, then good luck to you as the Koi dogs are so, so cute. And I'm totally in love myself. If anyone would like to find out more about your programs, yes. what is the best way to get hold the of you? The best way to find me, there's no website. That's just a diversion that I can't handle. So I'm yeah, active you just, on Facebook. You just go, oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, and I'll then come Mark for you. comes yes. and finds you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm very active on Facebook, so search for just my name, Mark with a K, Klemperer, K-L-E-M-P-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R. Don't forget that last Yeah, e and we'll put a link here yeah. and we'll put a link in the descriptions. It's certainly something new on Animal Watch. What more could you ask? A coyote on a stone in California. And if you enjoyed this wonderful episode, be sure to give us a big like and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. Whoops. And be sure to tune in every week where we'd be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. So it's bye from me and bye from a very cute and cuddly, gorgeous coyote like Itka. Bye bye.